and is now tackling the problems of injuries and financial uncertainty. Every weekend rain or shine, regardless of their mean, we can all turn out to cheer on their respective team. One has 13 heroes who play by the riverside, the other club has 15, they were black and gold with pride. Rugby is their passion, winning well their only goal. Wigan Rugby League have had a less than spectacular start to the season. They've lost five important matches and all the players are feeling the pressure. But there is one man who could turn the tide for Wigan, Martin Afire, the star winger of another leading club, Witness. Afire also plays for Great Britain and during the last four seasons he's been the league's top try scorer. But since the start of this season, he's been in dispute with Witness and hasn't played a game. Throughout November, there's been speculation in the town that a fire will be put on the transfer list. But would Wigan be able to buy him? Martin, a fire? Good morning, Martin. It's John Ben. Are you in a position to speak to me, Martin? Mm-hmm. I understand. Uh-huh. Maurice Lindsay at Wigan is, is saying nothing, but have you heard any further developments regarding your transfer request, Martin? Oh, you, you don't know what's, what's happening at Witness. M Martin, you're obviously anxious to get back into Rugby League as quickly as possible. Uh -huh. And particularly into the Great Britain side, um, uh, with a view to making the Australian tour next summer. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, that, that's your biggest frustration, Martin. Uh, c can I quote you? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for speaking to me. Thank you. Bye. He says he, he's unaware of what witness are got, the witness are committed are going to do. He, he feels that they're trying to keep him there at all costs. Uh, and he's just in limbo. Days later, Martin Afire is out of limbo, and Wigan chairman Maurice Lindsay breaks the news to coach John Money. Uh, I just wanted to tell you, it, it, it might be it might be good news, but it might be a bit of a mind blower as well. Just had a phone call um, this morning. Witness have put Martin Fire on the transfer list officially. Well, yeah, you, you know what I think about it. I mean, it's they don't come along all that often. And, I mean, we're going to have to pay more than more well, than we should. This, aren't is, the, we? this is the bit I've got to tell you now. Can't believe it, but they put him on at £700,000. Now, I'm not sure um, whether, therefore, he intends to sell him or not. I mean, that, that could mean £700,000, everybody keep away, and send in a message to Martin that you better get your boots back on because you're going to play for witness. What's, or it, what's, what's that in Australian terms? About $2 million? About $2 million, <laughs> yeah. We'll have to leave it for a little while. If we just jump straight on the phone, uh, it'll look as though we're, um, we're anxious to pay any price. So I can't. I think that what'll happen it'll be the typical thing of uh, Dougie Lawton and everybody else saying it's a crazy fee. We're not interested, and we'll have to say the same. And we wouldn't be at that fee. Yeah. Um, but if you really want him, um, and, and I know from talking to the past, you will say that we we will have a the, make the best effort we possibly can. Well, it's, it's good news for the club, isn't it? It's good mm -hmm. news for the town. And I mean, if, if with losing Elry this season, if if we could. Put somebody like Martin O'Fire on the end of our back line, anything could happen. You yeah. know, we'd be we'd be right back in the race. We'd be right back mm -hmm. in the hunt, and uh, you know they'd really have to beat us in. But Wigan cannot afford Martin O'Fire at the asking price. The club has built a new stand, and construction costs have gone way over budget. Like the stand, Wigan's accounts are firmly in the red. We have a duty as the directors of the club to ensure that the the club doesn't get into a position of insolvency. And so the directors need to be able to add up and do their sums, and that's my job. Uh, having said that, the supporters of the club don't care if you're in, con in, in debt, providing it's manageable and controllable, 
what they really want to see is the team on the field on the day uh, performing performing well. It's a catch-22 situation. You go heavily into debt by building a new stand. Then you need to spend money on the team to keep it winning to afford to pay the debt on the new stand. Hi, Jack. I'm just uh, sling the coat in the mic. Before he can even start negotiations to buy Martin a fire, Morris Lindsay must visit the club accountant for an up-to-date financial report. OK, Vince, I think... Um... With everything that's going on with the stand, etc., we better review the finances and uh, you better give me an up-to-date situation. Well, Maurice, as you know, uh, 12 months ago, we were in a very healthy situation, but uh, we were committed to the stand, which has gone some £800,000 over budget. Um, prior to commencing the stand, we had money on the money market, as you're aware. Uh, but fortunately, the bank have uh, backed us with the stand, and so have the brewery. We've got support there, but the 800,000 over budget has put substantial strains on our resources at the present time. In the short term, um, of course, you've got to uh, still look at investment in the team. And you know that there's the um, situation at the moment concerning Martin and Fire. Now, if we, if we were to... Uh, by Martin of Fire that of course gives us additional capital requirements mm. uh, but I understand that the sponsor is prepared to help us in that area they, they would be keen to have Martin of Fire linked to them so that should uh, that should assist matters now we sold Ellery Hanley uh, just remind me what are the dates for the payments from Leeds uh, when, when is the money due and the balance? Well, we've only a final payment due now, which is due on the 1st of February. The first in addition to that, we have a payment due on Bobby Goulding as well. So it's some £90,000 to £200,000 coming To come in. from Leeds, because yes. both players went on, the, on a right. sort of a, an extended mm. payment uh, mm. uh, agreement. Uh, you've just received a second payment for Ellery Hanley, that was the 1st of December, wasn't right. it? Mm. So you've swallowed that up. Uh, OK, mm. and that, so that's gone into uh, into the general flow of things. OK, I'll keep you up to date, Vince. Mm. Um, in the meantime, uh, just uh, keep the uh, keep the chequebook phone the locked away. <laughs> and uh, if anybody wants to go out and uh, and buy two Martin fires, we'll have to tell them well, we, can, we we probably can't afford one, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll still do our best. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks, Vince. Okay, no problem. Away he goes. He beats Gary Jack. He's going to score. Wigan desperately need a player with Martin fires talents. Their new Australian star, Gene Miles, was injured in training just after his first match and has been out of the game for four weeks. Well, it's getting more frustrating every day. You know, I've, I've dragged my family uh, halfway across the world to play rugby league and, uh, you know, only being able to play, um, you know, three games out of the last six or whatever it has been, has been, uh, you know, the, the, the expectations of, of the Wigan Rugby League Club is uh, win at all costs and uh, they become very accustomed to winning. Well, I haven't been the uh, the best person to live with over the last few weeks. Things aren't uh, real rosy on the uh, on the home front. In the bar, quick. Jean felt very down, very disappointed and frustrated. I think he possibly was a little hard to live with for a while, and very quiet. And when there's only three of you in the house and two aren't talking. Um, it is sort of very lonely. While Gene Miles copes with his domestic duties, his teammates are training hard in the cold November night. At this level, players can earn up to £80,000 a year. But as Wigan captain Dean Bell knows, it's not a long career. Rugby league has given me a good life. Um, without rugby league, you know, I'd probably be, you know, stuck in a factory working all hours and taking home a, a very small wage. I know at some stage my career's going to finish, and at the moment things are going along nicely. Um, I'm 29 years of age, and realistically, I suppose I've got another four or five years in the game. But all of a sudden, that money stops as soon as you stop playing, you know. How am I going to pay the mortgage? Um, you know, what am I going to do next? Where's the money coming from? Previously, you know, a lot of players have they get all this money coming in while they're playing, 
and a lot of them haven't thought about the future. They've just sort of lived from day to day, you know, and it's been good while it lasted, but they haven't really looked ahead. Eager to secure his own future beyond the playing field, Dean Bell has been investing part of his income in women's clothing, a fashion shop run by his English wife, Jackie. Dean and I have just opened this shop and we've been open about five weeks now. And we hope that it will eventually set us up for the future. It could all end tomorrow if there was a serious injury or something and you just have to look to the future. Do you worry about injuries? Yes, I do. Um, Sometimes, you know, they seem to come in in spates that where they get a lot all at once, which Dean's had a lot of cuts and bruises and things, but luckily he's not been too, too injured, you know, with, with serious injuries. Mm. Injuries are a constant worry, and not just for medical reasons. Mm. In rugby league, except for a small basic wage, the player's deal is no play, no pay. And in this game, as Dean well knows, injury is inevitable. I've lost um, some ligaments in my knee at some stage of my career. Um, I've had two cartilage operations, I've had an operation on my fingers. I've had various cuts and stitches. I've had a hernia. And um, I've uh, recently had rib cartilage damage. So re really, I mean, I, I, I consider, consider myself to be quite lucky. Um, some other people mightn't, but there's, there's a lot, of w lot worse injuries that keep players out for, for a long time, and I've been quite lucky that mine haven't been too serious. The time has now come for Maurice Lindsay to open negotiations with the witness chairman to buy Martin a fire. Oh, hello. May I speak to Mr Mills, please, Mr Jim Mills? It's Maurice Lindsay, Wigan Rugby League Club. Hi, Jim. Maurice. Fine, thanks, mate. And you? Very good. Uh, listen, you can probably guess why I'm ringing. Um, but uh, I don't really have an, an offer to put to you, but um, I just wondered what your real thoughts are. Yeah? Yeah, I understand that. Um, but obviously, at 700,000, nobody's really going to move either, Jim. Mm hmm. I know he's a one off. Yep, I accept all that, but the fact remains that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, somebody's got to sign a cheque, and when you sign a cheque, you're supposed to have money in the bank. Yeah. Well, look, I've registered our interest. Um, you know that some... T well, about eight, what, eight weeks ago now, we told you that we'd have passed on the Ellery Hanley money straight away. Uh, we've actually spent some of that now. We bought Billy McGinty and uh, Neil Cowie. Um, but we could still probably manage a quarter of a million if it was of any interest to you. All right, I accept that, but whatever happens, we're, we're, we're in. Um, we'd like to keep talking to you, Jim. So if you just keep me informed um, of, of how, the, how the negotiation is going with anyone, and uh, if we can come out number one, we, we'll certainly make every effort to. That's great. I'll keep in touch. Thanks, Jim. Take care, mate. Bye. After, after what he's done, and, uh, and then when we're doing the warm-ups, he just slipped over and he's hurt his groin again. So he's had his thigh injury and now, he's, now his groin's not mm -hmm. real good, so he's possibly going to miss this game and he might even miss another one. I mean, he can't take a trick. So he's missed Mr. Month. Yeah. And, uh, and he could be missing what, who knows, with a groin. <sighs> well, I mean, yeah, it is, but I, and I know everybody's getting really 
you know, they're starting to get on his back a little bit and the players are getting stuck into him a bit. But, I mean, nobody feels worse than Gene does. So, yeah. uh, so you know, I, I don't know whether you want to talk to him. I've just told him that, uh, you know, we need him fit, don't we? Yeah. That's the main thing. Well, listen, mate, I, I, I know what he'll be going through. Uh, he's come over in a, a blaze of publicity. Uh, he's played what? Well, I don't think he's played 100 minutes of football. Uh, and he's going to be worrying him. Uh, Debbie's got the baby coming. Uh, he's bound to be under massive pressure. Just tell him, please, mate, don't worry about a thing, right? We know he's a class act, um, and, and, he, and the last thing he needs is to think he's under pressure from us. He's not. Tuesday, 3rd of December. The Wigan Board of Directors hold their weekly meeting. Well, obviously, gentlemen, I suppose we'd better talk about the Martin of Fire situation. Obviously, from our discussion over the weekend, you're up to date, but just to confirm that um, I did, again, speak to Jim Mills. He, um, he said that the original fee of 700,000 is probably unrealistic, mm -hmm. and he would, therefore, uh, be prepared to do up to 500,000, which, obviously, I said was unrealistic as well, and beyond our reach, considerably beyond our reach. Um, he said that they are uh, pretty desperate for cash themselves. I said, I know how you feel. And um, the, the, the door is open, but there isn't really very much progress. They're obviously hoping to get as much as they possibly can by hoping that two or three clubs will get into competition. Yeah. So how far are we prepared to go, or are we prepared to go at all? It'd be a great signing for us. That's right. uh, I, I start mm. feeling excited mm. at the very thought of him, you know, coming, if it was possible. I think uh, when, when, when we take ourselves back and we went for the amazing signing of Ellery, mm. £150,000 was a fortune in those days, and it, and it probably gave us a few sleepless nights, didn't it? Yeah. But A, look at the way our gates went up, and B, look at the... Look at the um, priceless excitement that we've had along with the spectators. Hey, scarce commodities, uh, price is always up on a scarce commodity and uh, obviously a fire is one of those uh, commodities, isn't it? It's a one-off, isn't it? One-off, very scarce. Once in a lifetime, I suppose, really. Mm. So we'll hang on in there. That's the message from uh, around the table tonight, isn't it? We're all aware that money is short, particularly in view of the fact that we've built the stand, yeah. we're probably in a more difficult situation than we've ever been. Mm. Uh, equally, um, we know that they're going to hang out for the last yeah. farthing, aren't they? Because yeah. they're only going to sell him once. So we shall just uh, do everything we can to try and pull yeah, off a sensible right. deal. If there's any chance of signing him at all, we've mm. got to be there. We've Absolutely. got to have a go. Mm. I mean, he's world class. Mm -hmm. You know, even though he's expensive, we've got to have a go. And mm -hmm. I think that's it. We all feel the way, that yeah. same way, don't we? We've always bought the best for the spectators yeah. and for the town, haven't we? It's, it's always been our policy. Only the best is good enough for Wigan. After another three weeks off, Gene Miles has at last been declared fit to play in today's match against Hull. Well, after many hours at the, uh, the physiotherapist, I've, uh, I'm finally ready to, to make my uh, long-awaited comeback. It's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a very frustrating last few weeks. You know, it's at a very important stage of the year for us. It's uh, leading into Christmas, so, you know, this is when the uh, championships won, so, you know, hopefully we can... Uh, Get a bit of a roll on and uh, and uh, keep our supporters very happy. Had a girl. Where's John going, Tegan? Oh. Football. <laughs> Football. It's rugby. <laughs> He's called the rugby. Rugby. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Oh, bye bye now. Kiss for that. Hello? 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 Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. See ya. See ya. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Hey, girls. How are you? How are you? What's up? Are you having a photograph taken? Where's your mother? <laughs> well, she's not too clever at the moment. You didn't frighten her off, did you? Well, listen, we give her, we give her a clip of the camera. You weren't swearing, were you? No, it wasn't me, it was You weren't swearing at the referee. What do I say swear about the referee? Yes. You've got your mum. I'm almost proud of her. I can't tell you what she's said, though. No, we gave her a cup of tea, didn't we? And a biscuit. Oh, she loved it. She loved it. Coming again? Yeah. yeah. But I don't want her coming back to the home swearing and shouting and carrying on. Oh, she will. 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 Yes, oh yes. She puts me in. Hello, John. Hello, you all right, lad? Yes. Hey, all right, lad. I'm great, thanks, mate. All the best. Thanks, mate. All yeah. right. Well, we've got one or two missing again today, but we're doing our best. All right. I'm every confidence in him. Thanks, Lord. While the new grandstand may be giving Morris more than just financial problems, if his team beat Hull today, Wigan could be back on track for a third successive League and Cup double. Wigan having won the toss then, it will be uh, Hull with the backs to the cup, kicking off down to the new stand area, high one, bit short of the line, taken cleanly, Wigan coming hard away in these early moments, forcing the way into the hole 25 taking a long time to get the ball played and Wigan not moving it away well from the and now they're driving for the line Out to Edwards, Edwards coming with it. Clark turning round, Wigan going to be in trouble, and Wigan are nearly through here. Can they keep it going out? they got Surgeon for the line, turning it into the middle. On to... Sean Edwards' try puts Wigan 16 points to six ahead. The match is going well in the second half when captain Dean Bell is injured yet again. And Bell, who must have lost pints of blood this season, he... Looks like an exercise in tapestry. He's taken a lot of hammer and he's spilt a lot of blood. Hard man, Dean Bell, can take it as well as dish it out. A Dean Bell horror Dean Bell surgery. You've been doing this quite a bit, haven't you? Mm, I am. <laughs> all, for, all for the wrong reasons. I feel depressed when I'm injured, not because of the injury. It's because I think I'm letting my teammates down. I just want the doc to hurry up so I can get back there and help my teammates out. Should just have a zipper on here, Doc. Hmm. Ball's been dropped, that should be Wiggins. Wiggins snatch it up, turn defence into attack as he tried to get it out to Myers on the wing. Wigan going for the line, he's got a score! And from a loose ball! Sounds like us, Keith. Sorry, Dean. Oh, you're punching me there. Just a bit. <laughs> Beautiful as ever. Now it's up tight as, as Cowie. And Cowie's getting it moving. And we've got O'Donnell coming away. Great run by O'Donnell. Flex it inside. Wigan keeping it going. Lobbed out. Can he get it out onto the wing as Wigan still driving forward? Oh, what power! <laughs> the crowd love that. Is that it? Yeah. Right, pal. Come on. Come on. Let's jog it back. It'll lift everybody up anyway. Oh. Come on. Let's see if we can do it. I'll put, I'll put him some more in there. I'll go ahead. I suppose I was brought up quite hard by my father. He always used to tell me, never come off a rugby pitch unless you're carried off. Yeah, but I could do with that. Yeah. We're into injury time, so we might as well bang it over. It's 22 points to 12.
Well, that's keeping Botticus tally up. Another goal for him. There goes the Hooter. And Wigan will be glad to have another two points as they fight the way towards the championship. The final score then, Wigan 24, Hull 12. No, no, I have to have a look at it actually. I hate this moment. Oh. You're lucky you're married. Oh. Still good looking. Still good looking. Yo. You'll be the ugliest father of Christmas in Wigan this week. Hey, I'll be one of the richest. I thought it was a tremendous game today. Uh, I thought in the first half we were really going to romp home, it'd be 90-0 for uh, Wigan. But uh, Hull came back in the second half and they, they made a really good match of it. The, uh, the guest, no one guesses that it's... Every home to... game, the sponsor uh, chooses one Wigan player as, as man of the match. Really it's often more a sign of encouragement the, uh, than any strict uh, judgment of who's been the best player on the day. Um, I'd now like to make the presentation of the man of the match, uh, no one's <laughs> choice of man of the match to Dean Bell. Thank you very much to uh, Norwood and David. Uh, this, this certainly is appreciated, but. More importantly for me, from a personal point of view, it's uh, nice to be back on the pitch and uh, yeah, well to put uh, consecutive games together is, uh, is very satisfying for me. I must thank uh, the coach personally, he's been a great support and also the directors of the club and, and of course the players, they've been, uh, they've been supporting me ever since I arrived here and uh, it's, it's really been great and I'm, I'm starting to enjoy myself, so yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, good, a few days after the Hull game, Gene's son Leon is born. For his wife, Debbie, life in Wigan is beginning to look a little less grim. I did wonder at one stage if it was the right move we had made. But as time went on, you know, it got better and better. Jean was named Man of the Match, and I just thought it was very nice when they presented him with that award. I think we've been getting a little bit of uh, special treatment because of our association with the Wigan Rugby Club. All the, uh, the sisters and the, and the midwives are all uh, the mad Wigan supporters. So uh, Liam has been getting a little bit of special treatment, which is great. January the 4th, 1992. Maurice Lindsay announces that Wigan has finally bought Martin Afire for a world record fee. Morning, gentlemen. Um, the deal was clinched with Big Jim um, between, finally between 4 and 4.30 yesterday. Um, the fee is correctly reported at £440,000, and Martin has agreed uh, a deal with the club which will take him up until ninety-five. Next week, a crisis on the other side of town, at Oral Rugby Union, as two players battle for the same position. 